So I found out the hard way that YouTube actually can promote my content to new people. I know, it's crazy. The algorithm, like, is a thing. So basically, if you guys were not aware, I have American Girl Dolls and I have a YouTube channel about them. And so I've made a couple of commentary-ish videos in the past, but this one actually featured my face, this past one that I made. And so YouTube was like, oh, humans, human people who are over the age of 12, they want to watch this. And so it shipped out my video to a bunch of random people and they were super confused because although it was a bit of a deep dive into certain aspects of the American Girl YouTube community, it didn't explain what it was because it was directed at American Girl YouTubers. And so a lot of preliminary knowledge was skipped and therefore people were confused, even though a lot of them were pretty nice. So I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to make my very big dreams come true, sort of maybe, and make a video all about AGTube for people who aren't in AGTube. And so I'm here dressed up in my only piece of American Girl clothing that I have, this cute little shirt right here. And I'm going to explain to you the answer to your burning question. What is AGTube? If you have been on the internet at all for the past month or two or three at this point, you've probably seen these memes or this news headline. That's the Instagram corner of the American Girl community. What started out as doll lovers making memes quickly sprouted into people who would have bullied me in middle school making memes. But in all seriousness, I do think it's pretty cool because it takes people who either didn't know about American Girl or haven't played with their dolls since they were a kid and reintroduces it to them. And it's kind of caused a bit of a resurgence in the company, which is nice because it's been one of my interests for about 12 years now, and now I feel a little less silly about it. <laughs> Though, of course, you know, love myself. But a lot of you guys watching this video are probably like those people who are either new or need to brush up on their history, and so I will give you guys a bit of a history lesson now. Also, hi, I have my notes on my iPad from 2016. So if I'm looking down, it's because I have it on a chair. Sorry, I can't memorize this stuff. I don't have that much time on my hands, so yeah. <laughs> anyway. American Girl is a doll company that was founded by Pleasant Roland in 1986 and sells 18-inch dolls targeted at children aged 8 to 12. Originally known as Pleasant Company, it put out its first dolls that year, and since then the company has grown a lot. It was purchased by Mattel in 1998 and renamed to American Girl and has seen many dolls come and go since then. The original line consisted of dolls representing different historical time periods like Miss Samantha right here, a company with historical fiction book series in order to get children interested in learning about history and to put girls in the spotlight since they're often underrepresented in, like, everything. <laughs> this was the main focus of the company until probably the mid to late 2010s, if I'm being honest. The original characters were retired in the late 2000s and early 2010s, making way for more modern dolls that kids are more interested in. The company used to make a huge deal out of dolls being sent to the archives, as they called them, but in 2014, they retired a bunch of them at once in a failed attempt to rebrand the line, and since then, they've just been quietly getting rid of collections without retiring the dolls and just not announcing anything. A line of dolls meant to represent any child was launched in the 90s, letting children know that they too are a part of history that is worth writing about. Nowadays, the line is less educational and is more focused and branded as empowering girls to be themselves, but still serves as a way for kids to find a doll that looks just like them. The line has gone through many name changes and rebrands, but it's generally referred to as the Just Like You line. The third major doll line offered by American Girl is the Girl of the Year line, consisting of dolls released once per year with the book series set in the present. There's one doll released per year, hence the name, and on January 1st, there are events hosted at the American Girl store to celebrate the doll release. In the past, these dolls are only available for their representative years, but lately they've just been keeping them around until stock runs out. There have been a few other small lines created in the past 10 years, including a failed contemporary characters line, and the recently launched Well by Us line, which is focused on activism, and I feel like as a response to concerns that American Girl's representation is severely lacking. There are, of course, many flaws to the company's branding and representation, but that's a discussion worthy of a more in-depth follow-up video, or academic research. For those of you who are unaware, I love American Girl dolls, and I have many of them. 
It started out with reading the books in my school library, and on Christmas of 2010, I received a doll that looked just like me. I had four dolls as a kid, and though I loved reading the stories for each character, I became much more interested in creating my own. So I was one of those kids that wasn't allowed to go on YouTube. It was a wild and vast and unregulated platform my mom did not want me to be going on. <laughs> but I guess one day I decided that American Girl was a safe enough topic for me to explore. So I cracked open the YouTube app that came pre-installed on my iPod Touch in 2012, and I came across a whole community of young tweens and teens who made videos of their American Girl dolls, the majority of which were stop motion animation. I had never seen anything like that before, and I was so inspired that I wanted to make my own, which many, many years later is the reason why I have a YouTube channel today. So that's my personal connection, leading from the carefully curated branding and image of the American Girl company to a large community of unregulated fan-made content. This community of American Girl doll filmmakers is, you guessed it, called AGTube. So now you know what AGTube vaguely means. It's the American Girl corner of YouTube and people make stop motion animations with their dolls. That is, of course, generally what it is, but it's not quite the full picture. There is, like all online communities, a culture surrounding AGTube, and I'll do my best to try to explain it. Shockingly, there is no one really dedicated to keeping tabs on AGTube history except for me, because I'm a nerd and this is my interest. So it's kind of my own challenge to turn this into something for people who don't know what I'm talking about, because I have been deep in this rabbit hole for about six years now. <laughs> I've written a few essays and research papers about it in my first year of college, and we'll probably find a way to milk it for eternity though, so I'll try to pull from that to start this segment of the video. AGJ began with a small community of creators in 2007. The impermanent nature of the internet, as well as YouTube's lack of decent search functions, make it hard for me to find the official first AGTube video, but X Molly Girl X is usually regarded as the first AGTuber. She got her start with Annabeth Makes a Movie, which is kind of just a video of a kid playing with their dolls. It's a live action skit with close ups on characters as they speak, but there's also a stop motion dance later in the video. That was her most viewed video, but as of today, all of her videos have over a thousand views, most of which are in the tens or hundreds of thousands. On early YouTube, most stop motions were pretty low quality dance videos and had a pretty low frame rate. At the time, stop motions were an experiment to portray dolls in situations you couldn't in the live action format since your hands would get in the way. Over time, stop motions on YouTube have drastically improved due to both changes in technology and the user base growing up and maturing. But there is, in my opinion, one channel that truly transforms stop motions throughout the community. Basil Mentos was a Canadian YouTube channel created in 2009 by a young girl named Anna. Initially, her videos were pretty standard for children and toy YouTube communities, with lower quality videos such as doll room tours, random skits, and various videos unrelated to American Girl. Her first stop motion, uploaded on October 1st, 2009, is a simple short video of her dolls tossing a soccer ball back and forth. Her stop motions gradually increased in quality over the next couple of months, until September 1st, 2010, when her stop motion, What Happens When You're At School, was uploaded. It now has over 2.5 million views and is her earliest video to reach this milestone. Her following stop motion series, Things That Go Bump in the Night, established her as a consistent creator, setting up her future series for popularity as well. But her first summer movie, Supergirls, truly cemented her as a major creator on AGTube, and foreshadowed future innovative videos to come. The movie, which is over 16 minutes long, follows three girls with superpowers and uses elaborate sets and movements for the time. In the years following, she created many more classic AGTube movies, Midsummer Magic, Trapped in Time, Mermaid Cove, and Dogwood Forest, almost all of which have millions of views, as well as the mini-movie Lost Dog, which holds a title for the most amount of views on AGTube at over 22 million views. She kept her channel going even while she was away at college, which was rare on AGTube, until 2019 when she quietly left the platform following a blog post reflecting on her time on AGTube. Sadly, YouTube's COPPA policies, which restrict revenue and disable comments on any video deemed made for kids, are partially to blame for her departure, as well as the dwindling popularity of the community. That's by no means the end of the AGTube discussion, though. Now I'm going to shift my focus to a different video format, the live-action series, and how one in particular took over the AGTube community. Live-action series have existed on AGTube since the community began, and share similarities with early videos in other toy communities such as LPSTube but they never reached quite the same popularity as AGSMs. Although view counts would never reach the same heights as the likes of Basil Mentos, one series in particular changed the community forever, Aspen Heights. Aspen Heights is a fantasy drama series following a girl in the foster care system who gets dropped off at a boarding school with an interesting and somewhat magical history, and she soon finds out that she is the chosen one, and people are out to get her. This series has everything, magic, way too many love triangles, families who hate each other, the American Girl version of Twitter's White Boy of the Month, and more. Although you could probably tell that it was a bit cliche, viewers were obsessed with it, to the point where it had its own fandom within the AGTube community. Other series made by its creator, Alexis aka AG Smiles, were popular just by association, but Aspen Heights was the flagship series. 
Although the popularity of the series has since dwindled, in part due to the fact that it will probably never be finished, remnants of the old fandom live on through fan accounts, bad fan fiction, posts on Alexis' spam, and people commenting on her pros every couple of months begging her to finish it and please, please, please come back. These series were different from the stop motions that dominated the platform because they were a bit more mature, following the drama of high schoolers put in somewhat dramatic situations. Her series were gone to influence many others, sparking a new genre of HTube series. HTubers rarely, if ever, make videos related to the books or stories published by the American Girl Company. Instead, videos on HTube involve characters and personalities created by the age YouTubers, so you can see how the fandom is somewhat removed from the company. Similarly, the American Girl Company typically does not recognize HTube or other fan communities, but in 2015, they started their own stop motion series about a young filmmaker and encouraged HTubers to interact with their videos and even featured a few of them. Also, later that year, American Girl Instagram user Love of Autumn was invited to American Girl headquarters and took some photos that were featured in the catalog along with other fan made photos. Starting in late 2015, American Girl reached out to a mix of HTubers and young toy YouTubers to create clue videos to tease their next Girl of the Year characters. The following year has to be my favorite because they teamed up with two really popular age YouTubers and they created some really awesome videos for it. Over the years, less and less age YouTubers have been featured until the final clue series, teasing their 2020 character, featured only one age YouTuber. Nowadays, they pretty much ignore our existence, and though they started making stop motion series again, they're produced by a professional company, and so they're much higher quality than anything that a regular person, especially a young teen, can make on their own. Also, their videos seem much more targeted towards young children, and as they have more cluttered and clickbaity thumbnail and title style. More recently, they've seemingly capitalized on their newfound Instagram fame and launched a podcast hosted by two major American Girl Instagram photographers. Their TikTok presence, though, has some references to, like, meme culture that seem to depart from the company's family-friendly image, which could be a response to the growing nostalgia around the brand. I just wanted to close this video with a bit of a reflection on the community. HGTube is more than just kids playing with their dolls or teens who never grew up. It's a place of creativity and innovation, and for years I've seen people test the limits of both stop motion and live action to make really amazing videos. So, that's my crash course on HGTube. Given that I've been deep in the community for years, I hope that I was able to make it make sense for everyone. I'd love to keep making videos that dive deeper into different aspects of HTube and the community, and I hope you guys stick around. I know this is a bit of a niche topic, but I love watching videos like this, so I hope you'll also enjoy it. So I'm going to end this video with something I have not said in like six years. Uh, comment, like, and subscribe! <laughs> Seriously though, comments really are the most significant form of engagement for me because it really feels like people are actually watching them when I get to see their own perspective, even if they just like say something like first. I really love getting comments from non-age YouTubers too, whether they grew up watching these videos or if they're completely new. It's also pretty hard when YouTube deactivates my comments repeatedly for hours after I upload them, and so sometimes it feels like I'm just shouting into the void. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed a peek into this little community that I call home. Bye!